The camera uses a 2 megapixel sensor and records in 1080p and there are two versions of this camera, one with a 2.7 to 13.5 mm varifocal lens, which is the one I got, and then you have one with a fixed 4 mm lens as well. It can pan 355 degrees and tilt 90 degrees and you can adjust the speed when you pan and tilt the camera. The camera is made for outdoor use with IP66 rating, which means it should have no problem with heavy rain. And the working temperature is minus 20 to 60 degrees Celsius. You can record 24-7 or when motion is detected directly to the SD card, and you can use up to 64 GB. It also supports UNBIF, so you can use it with any third-party NVRs or software. And I connected the camera to UNBIF device manager without a problem. And by using an app on your smart device you will get instant push notifications when motion is detected and you can go back and view playbacks recorded on the SD card. The camera works with 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi or as a wired camera and it supports two-way audio so you can talk and listen through the camera. And this is how it sounds like when I speak through the camera. For night vision it uses four infrared LEDs and two white LED lights so you can set the camera to either use normal black and white IR night vision or something called smart night vision which means when the camera detects motion it will turn on the white LED lights for full color night vision. They will stay on for 30 seconds and then the camera will switch back on to normal IR night vision. In the box we got the camera, power adapter, CD and a quick start guide antenna, network cable and a screw kit. Most of the camera is made of plastic except for half part of the camera housing which is made of metal and since it's made of plastic the quality feels a bit cheap but I guess you can't expect too much either for a $70 PTZ camera. On the front we got the lens, four infrared LEDs and two white LEDs and under we got the microphone and the speaker. And to insert the SD card we need to open up this cover. You can access the camera through a web interface, the app or using a client software. So to access the camera through a web interface you need to type the IP address of the camera into your browser's address bar. And the default username and password is admin. Here we got the PTZ controls and the zoom in zoom out. We can also set the speed how fast we want the camera to pan and tilt. One is extremely slow and I can't see it being useful. And even at the higher speed 63 it's not really that fast. We can also set the preset points here. If we click on settings and then video we can change the video coding, bitrate, frames per second and image quality. In image settings we can adjust brightness, saturation, contrast and exposure. We can turn on and off wide dynamic range and change night vision mode. And if we go to alarm and then motion detection, in here we can set up to four individual areas where we want motion detection to be active, which can be quite useful to reduce false alarms. And I will quickly show you all the advanced settings as well, and you can pause the video if there is a setting you're more interested in. To connect the app and the camera is really easy and shouldn't take more than a few minutes. So first you need to download an app called CamHi from Google Play Store or App Store depending on what device you're using. You can connect to the camera either by using the Ethernet cable or by AP mode and I will show you how to do it using AP mode. So connect the power cable to the camera and wait for a minute or so and then go into your phone's Wi-Fi and check for a Wi-Fi called IP Cam followed by some numbers. Click on connect and then add a password, 
which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now you should be connected to the camera. So open up the app and go into Wi-Fi settings and then add your home Wi-Fi. And that's it. Easy, right? In here we can access the recordings by clicking on video and then select your camera. And if you have set the camera to record 24-7, you will see something called plan recording. And by default it will create a new clip every 10 minutes. And the alarm recording is when the camera detects motion. And each clip is 15 seconds long. If we go back out and then click on settings, we can turn on and off motion detection. And in action with alarm, we can for example turn on the alarm siren. And we can also record our own sound, which is kinda nice. I will give you five seconds to get away from my property, otherwise I will call the police. I will give you five seconds to get away from my property, otherwise I will call the police. Other than that, most of the settings are the same as in the web interface. However, one thing that I miss in the app is the PTZ controls. Only way to pan and tilt the camera is by drag your finger on the screen, which is really hard to control. Okay, let's have a look at some recordings. This is at daytime, and at 10 meters you can read a license plate quite easily. And here I play around with the PTZ functions. This is at night time with normal infrared, but it's not in complete darkness since there is a street light just across the street. And here I turn on the white LEDs. They are really strong and light up the area quite well. And this is how it looks like when you set night vision on auto. And when the camera detects motion it will turn on the white LEDs and they will stay on for 30 seconds. This is me testing how fast you will get the push notification. And I'm using mobile data here. <laughs> 